Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Futurum Tech Podcast. I'm Daniel Newman, your host, CEO of the Futurum Group. We are going to be chatting about cyber resilience today, and we are going to be talking about artificial intelligence today. There, I did it. It's been 12 seconds, and I managed to mention artificial intelligence. But really, can you do a technology podcast these days and not talk about AI? The truth is, there's no way. But the other truth is, as AI continues to proliferate, it is benefiting companies, driving productivity, creating efficiencies, but it's also creating new risk, new threat surfaces, new challenges. And if you're a CISO or if you're a company that has important data to protect, you need to be thinking about AI in a different capacity. And today I'm going to be talking to Anika Gupta. She's the chief product officer at Rubrik. And this is part of our ongoing series with Rubrik. I've had a few great conversations. We're going to be diving into what's going on in this space, cyber resiliency, AI, and so much more. Anika, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having me. Really excited to be here. It is great to have you here. So I gave everybody the title and specs, and they can all read the lower third. But let's be candid. Being a chief product officer means different things at different companies. Tell me a little bit about your background and what drew you to Rubrik and what you're doing now as the company's CPO. Absolutely. So I've been in product management for basically my entire career. I started, I did a little stint in engineering before going into product management, Uh, but I've been in product management early enough where there wasn't even that great of a definition of what product management was. So I've had to chart my own path along the way. Uh, My entire career has been at the intersection of data and technology. I joined Rubrik two and a half years ago um, after being at my previous company for uh, almost 11 years, uh, where I saw the company go from pre-product market fit startup all the way through being a publicly traded company. Um, And I was excited to to kind of see the next stage of that. And so I I came to Rubrik. What really drew me was just the, the fact that Rubrik's product was so strong, was revolutionizing the space in data um, and data security and had all of this opportunity to uh, really figure out how do we help our customers unlock the value of their data and protect the, their most critical asset. And that was a, an area I was really familiar with, but I loved the, the space that Rubrik was in and the opportunity and, um, and for, for growth within the product itself. Yeah, product management is a really important category. And if you're in the tech space, we've seen, you know, how many hats the the people in product management actually have to wear at any given time, because you gotta have a little bit of savvy across the board. You're a little engineer, you're a little marketer. Uh, sometimes you're a little sales, you're sometimes public speaker. Uh, you have to sometimes be able to translate to the financial team, understanding everything from FP and A. So it's a, it's a really super diverse skill set. Um, you know, and one that uh, I don't see Gen AI at least immediately being able to wear all those hats. I couldn't agree more. There's going to have to be a lot of graph to get all those roles done at one time. Um, But let me just say, you know, I've had some conversations on the pod. I talked to your CEO. Bipple did a great job here. You know, he was all in on cyber resilience. And so, I'm going to be candid. Cyber resilience is sort of this rising term. It's not cybersecurity and it's not just data resilience, but it's the two sort of, you know, it's the amalgamation. When people say to you, you know, why is cyber resilience so important? How do you kind of define cyber resilience? How do you tell that as a story unique to maybe the broader cybersecurity market set? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. Um, I think if you look at what um, security and traditional cybersecurity has been really focused on, it's really been focused on how do you keep attackers out of your system? Um, and that's a super important job because, you know, it, it's like you, you, you use the analogy of like, you're not going to not put locks on your house. You obviously need to put locks on your house. You want to put in place the defense mechanisms that are going to make sure that just not any random Joe Schmo can get into your crown jewels. But the reality is, is as we all know, is the cyber landscape um, and attackers are just continue to get more and more sophisticated. And it's a constant cat and mouse game of how do you create more security mechanisms to create uh, to, to prevent attackers from getting in. The reality that we're seeing is that attackers are still getting through these outer defense.